If you want a summer salad that's good for winter, spring, or fall, how about chicken? Especially when it's put together with your own homemade mayonnaise. We're doing mayonnaise of chicken today on The French Chef. The French Chef is made possible by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation. Welcome to The French Chef. I'm Julia Child. We're doing a salad today, and really to the French, when you say salad, it usually means tossed greens. And if they're going to use chicken or lobster, they call it a mayonnaise. So they would have a mayonnaise de de crab, for instance, for crabs, or de homard for lobster. And so that's what we're going to do. And here is a mayonnaise de volaille, meaning of flying things, or chicken. And just under this harlequinade of decoration is a delicious chicken salad. And we have a homemade, handcrafted chicken which was a stewing hen or fowl, gently poached in aromatic vegetables and so forth. And, and I got a beautiful, big, big stewing chicken. And so all the nice meat I cut off into pieces and then I diced off the rest of the small pieces of meat. And I've got about four cups of diced up chicken there. And you always have to have to have a bit of filler, which always works for taste as well as filling. So I think celery is one of the good things to put in. I'm just going to show you a fast way to do celery. After it's all washed, you line up the bottom and then chop off the bottom bits. And then chop off any stale top bits. And little bits of tender leaves you can leave and then you flatten it roughly with the flat of your knife and then that makes it easy to cut into strips. And then you line up all the strips together, cut them in half and hold them together and then you can cut them into dice. I think one of the important things in cooking is to learn how to do things like dicing onions and celery and so forth quickly because that is known as kitchen dog work and the faster you can do it the more pleasure you can have with the more subtle parts of the cooking such as flavoring and whatnot. And also I think it's nice to Nice to do things such as chopping well because it makes you feel clever. And there's about two cups of celery there, which I'm going to put into the four cups of chicken. And then it's going to have a little bit of more flavoring and additions. I'll just clean everything up here so you will always think that I'm a very neat person. I also have a little bit of... of egg white left over from some hard-boiled egg yolk. So I'm going to put that in. That's always a nice filler. And about half a cup of chopped scallions with a little bit of onion in. And about a third of a cup of parsley. I think when you're doing something that's very good, like an especially good chicken, you don't want to put in things that will be too strong and overpower the chicken. And also, I'm going to put in some walnuts. The last time we were in France, we found that it was on the chic restaurants that they were putting walnuts into all kinds of things. And then you really want to have a pre-seasoning before you put in your mayonnaise. So I'm going to put in a bit of salt, about half a teaspoon of salt there, possibly a little bit more, and some pepper. And then the juice of half a lemon. And this seasoning give, always gives a subtle more interest to the, to the salad, I believe. 
because I think if you put the if you put the mayonnaise to it right away, it makes it awfully heavy and rather oily. And then I'm going to put in a little bit of olive oil from my little this is my little Italian olive oil pitcher, which is very cute, I think. And then stir it all up. And then this should really sit and macerate for at least 20 minutes, and it even is a good idea to let it do so overnight. Because you will find that all of the flavors will blend together more successfully, and it needs nicely stirring up. And then taste it. You want to make sure that you've got enough salt and pepper and everything else in. That's very nice. And then that just is going to sit. And you should also do the same thing with your white, with your sliced meat, if you have it. I'm going to put on a little bit of, a tiny bit of olive oil there. And also a little bit of lemon and salt and pepper. Seem to have much lemon juice in there, or you could you could make a little French dressing and put that over. But I think the important thing, always in a homemade salad, is that everything be homemade. You wouldn't certainly wouldn't put a bottle dressing on. A little bit of parsley would be nice, and again I'm going to put on a bit of salt and pepper. And even though your chicken was beautifully poached in aromatic liquid, it always, it still needs just a little bit of seasoning. And then set that aside, covered, and baste it every once in a while. But you want to be sure, unless you're going to, if you're going to make the salad right away, say in about 20 minutes, you can keep it out. But otherwise, be sure to cover it and refrigerate it. And the best chicken salad is made with the best mayonnaise, and the best mayonnaise is homemade. And if you have, if you don't have a pan-crafted chicken like this, and it's they canned or frozen, then you've really got to have homemade mayonnaise, or you or you'll have something that just isn't interesting at all. And here is an example of homemade mayonnaise, which is eggy and fresh and got fresh lemon and good oil in it. And it's absolutely delicious. And all it's made out of is egg yolk and mustard and salt and lemon juice and vinegar and very good oil. And it's a very simple to make. And it's so good, I think that I just want to show you how to do it, just to show you that it is very fast. And I'm going to make it with three egg yolks. I've already got two in here. And the third is coming. And then it's going to be beaten up. And you can, of course, beat it by hand if you're a purist. Or you can beat it in a regular machine. But I find that these little, these little beaters are, are make it just so easy to do. And the important thing is, when you're making mayonnaise is that the first thing you have to do is to beat up the egg yolks until they're thick and sticky. And this takes about a minute to a minute and a half. And even with a fast little beater like this, it takes about that much time. And if you're beating it by hand, it'd probably take you about two and a half minutes. But don't ever forget this essential first step. I want you to see, see how that is. They've gotten thick now. And that's just the way they're supposed to look. You know, a lot of people are terribly afraid of making handmade mayonnaise, just the way they're terribly afraid of making hollandaise. It's because the egg yolk is a little tricky, 
but it isn't tricky if you understand it. So the whole, my whole point in here is to make you familiar with the yoke, which can be a nasty little prima donna, like many things, unless you beat it up and treat it the way it ought to be. And the, the treating here is just that preliminary beating, and there certainly is nothing difficult about that. So, now that is ready to receive the, the preliminary flavoring that it has, and then the oil goes in. So I'm going to go right on to it. We need a little more lemon juice, and we're going to have some mustard and salt. Now I'm going to start with the mustard about a quarter teaspoon of mustard, that's possibly a little bit more, but I happen to like mustard, which does seem to help thicken it up a little bit. And then a half teaspoon of salt. You can always add a little bit more later if you want. And then about, about a half teaspoon of lemon juice and about a half teaspoon of vinegar. You can use either lemon juice or vinegar or a combination, and I always like a combination. And you're going to keep adding a little more lemon juice and vinegar as you go along. And then this again, you beat up. You can use either dry or wet mustard for this, whichever you prefer. I'm going to show you how that looks again. That's practically like a thick custard sauce. And just remember when you're making a mayonnaise, just this very short pre preliminary, and you're ready to go. But then you have one more, one more caution, and there's nothing difficult about this, is again, is remembering the delicate digestion of the egg yolk, which is when you're going to add your oil because you're going to make an emulsion. An emulsion means so that the oil and the egg yolks mix together and turn into a thick sauce like mayonnaise. But before they can turn into a thick sauce, the emulsion has to start. And it starts gradually. So you add it just drop by drop at first. And now at this point, you must not stop beating in your oil. If the children begin falling out of the windows and the cats in the canary cage or the telephone rings, just don't stop until you get about half a cup of oil in and the sauce is thickened. And as soon as it is thickened, it means that it's taken. You can see in there it is beginning to thicken. It's usually about, about half a cup that has to go in. And a good trick is to watch the oil. Watch the spoon as it lets you are dripping the oil out of so that you're sure that you're not adding too much. And you can use either salad oil. Oh, I'll wait till I I'll wait till I stop before I tell you about the oil so that I won't be making so much noise. Now this is really getting very thick, but I'm not gonna take any chances. I'm just going to keep right on beating it until it's really very, quite a bit thicker. Now, look at, see how thick that is. That has taken, the emulsion has started, and all the crisis is completely over, and you can begin adding the oil quite quite fast now, in great big dollops. 
and you can use either olive oil or tasteless salad oil or a mixture of both. And what to add depends on what you're going to serve, what you're going to serve the mayonnaise with. For a chicken salad, I don't like too strong a taste, so I use a mixture of both. You see, at this point now, I'm adding the oil in great big, sort of two tablespoons dollops, and then beating it all in. Now look at this point. This is very thick. And at this point, if you want to add a little more oil, you should, you should put in a little more lemon juice or vinegar to lighten up the mixture. And then you can go on in, go on adding oil, and you can add up to two cups of oil. For three egg yolks, up to two cups of oil. If you add more than that, you might find that the, because again of the egg yolks digestion, they might suddenly their emulsion properties could begin to break down and they would refuse to take any more oil. And how much oil to add depends entirely, depends entirely on you and how much, how you want the mayonnaise to be. For instance, for the chicken salad, I want a really very thick mayonnaise. You see, that holds together. And if you want a slightly thinner mayonnaise, you could add a little bit more liquid. You could even beat a little bit of water into it to thin it out if you felt that you had enough, if you had enough vinegar or oil in, I mean a vinegar or lemon juice. But I want a thick, a very thick emulsion at this point. And then after you're finished with your mayonnaise, if you're not going to use it right away, cover it airtight because if you don't, it forms a little crust over it and then refrigerate it. And be sure to keep it refrigerated, particularly in warm weather, because egg yolks are a culture in which bacteria delight, delight in just as people. And so be sure to refrigerate it, and it'll keep about a week under refrigeration. But if you've had it in for about two days, it's wise when you take it out to let it come up to room temperature, because when it's, because when it's chilled, it can often, it can often separate unless it comes up to room temperature. Now, we're going to ready to assemble the solid. There's, I've got a platter, and I have oh, the salt and pepper, the lettuce. This is a good point to remember to put the salt and pepper on because that'll give it a little flavor. And then, get this out of the way, the mayonnaise goes into the chicken. And I'm not going to put an enormous amount in because I don't want to have too much in it. I just want to have enough so it's enrobed nicely. I could have really used a bigger bowl than this. Now one thing that you should do, look at before you uh, put on the mayonnaise, be sure and look at the chicken and if you find that it's awfully juicy, you want to drain it. Because if you, when you've put, a, put it in a, marina a marinade, very often the celery will exude juice, and, and then if you put the mayonnaise in, the whole thing thins out. So be sure, look at it, and if there's juice in, just drain it. Now this is ready to go onto the lettuce. I have shredded romaine lettuce on here, which I think goes very nicely because it has a good green color. I think I'm going to put on my glasses so I don't miss any fine points here. 
And then on top of this go the pieces of sliced chicken. This out of the way. See, that's it's very nice, I think, to have the sliced chicken on it. If you wanted to, you could have put more mayonnaise into the chicken and then just have the pieces of sliced chicken on top, but we're going into a, a rather fancy decoration. So the chicken is not really going to show. But you know it is there, which I think is a good psychological point. There are a few pieces of dark meat, some thighs. There's one thing I think is fun about uh, the French mayonnaise type salads is that they can be very fancy. Sometimes they will make, make a chauffoir that would be sort of a cold gelatin sauce on top. And then mayonnaise on top. And this doesn't have to go on very even, does not have to go on very evenly because there's going to be a decoration on top of this. I, frankly, I don't like to overload a salad with mayonnaise because I, I think it's nice to serve a little bit on the side and then people can have about what they like in the way of mayonnaise. And now we're going to have decorations. And this is the kind of, this is the decoration I'm going to do with those three, eight, with those various segments of green, yellow, and black, separated by strips of red. Now, and this is a, I'll show you, this is a nice trick for doing this. Now I'm going to start out with black olives. And to keep the segments even, take a piece of wax paper, fold it in half, and then just sprinkle the olives in that triangle that they leave. Remember the first time I saw this was when we went to a very fancy reception at the American Embassy in Paris, and they had a marvelous chef. And he had one of these salads, and I thought it was the most beautiful thing I ever saw, and I didn't realize until some time later that it wasn't that difficult to do. I just, I just couldn't imagine how he kept everything so even and lovely. And don't worry about little dribbles on the sides, because you can always cover that up later. And then with a fresh piece of paper, we're going to make another segment with green parsley. But you could make as many hundreds more segments if you had the time. And the wit. And now, a segment of yellow egg yolk, egg yolk, leg yolk, egg yolk. Now you would hardly think that under this was just an old, a little old, little old boiled fowl, as they call it. I think that's a nasty term for a chicken. I prefer to call it a sprightly stewing hen of a certain age. And now, separate the segments with strips of red pimento. These are all done naturally with impeccably clean fingers. 
that's one of the rules of the kitchen, that cleanliness is godliness. An impeccability. There, now that's very pretty with the, the black of the olives and the yellow of the egg yolk and the red of the pimento. Maybe those are the colors of somebody's flag. Now a little finial on top. That's a bit of parsley, and then a little cherry tomato on the top, and then to cover up any little spillies, which almost inevitably happen, a little more lettuce draped around the edge, and just at the last moment. You, if you did, did this ahead, you would put the lettuce around at the very last moment so it would look nice and fresh. I'd say we'd be doing that as neatly as possible, but it has a debonair look when it is not too neat. I don't like things too neat anyway. Well, I couldn't because it would never work out if I did. And now, I'm going to serve this delectable thing. See how it looks. I'll serve from the under the black olive side. And there is a lovely, nice, big piece of chicken. And then underneath, some of the salad part of the chicken. And then with it, I think it's very nice. You can just serve plain tomatoes and a little tomato and cucumber dressed with a little vinaigrette very simply, because you really don't need anything much more fancy. And you can have a piece of your own homemade rye bread, and also a very nice grave, a white Bordeaux grave wine. And if you can get a good one, it isn't too sweet. So this really is a salad for all seasons. It's a mayonnaise of chicken with walnuts and celery and, naturally, mayonnaise. But in summer, take away the chicken and send in a lobster or a crab, and you'll have a mayonnaise of seafood. And then in the fall, take away the seafood and send in an apple, and you have a Waldorf salad. But whatever you take away and send it in, for heaven's sakes, don't take away the mayonnaise. That's all for today on The French Chef. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit. This program was made possible by a grant from Polaroid Corporation. Julia Child is the author of From Julia Child's Kitchen, which includes the recipes from this program. Thank you.